Hello everyone, this is R.S. Miller at TheEndTimeNews.org and today is June 17, 2013. The U.S. and the West getting ever closer to war with Russia. As the Syrian civil war continues to spill over regional borders, the superpowers of the world find themselves playing an ever-increasing role in the conflict which effectively pits Russia and its allies Syria, Iran, and Hezbollah against the U.S. and its allies. If a diplomatic solution is not found, then the chances of war between Russia and the West get closer to becoming a reality. The G8 summit currently underway in Northern Ireland is one such diplomatic effort perhaps one of the last. Russia and the UK still have very different approaches to the Syrian crisis. British Prime Minister Cameron said after meeting Putin, adding that the decision to arm rebels is yet to be made. Russia's president warned against such a move, citing rebel atrocities. Ahead of the G8 summit, Syria dominated talks between Russia's president and the British Prime Minister in London. The two leaders said they shared common ground on the need for a diplomatic solution to the crisis. As RT's Polly Boyko reports from the UK capital, differences still prevail. Well, the leaders both said that they are committed to having a diplomatic resolution to the Syrian crisis. They are committed to organizing this so-called Geneva II conference, which will see both sides come to the negotiating table in order to discuss a peaceful way out of the crisis. But at the same time, they both admitted that they have very different approaches and analyses of the situation in Syria at the moment, while David Cameron uh, says that Bashar al-Assad is to blame for everything that's taking place and that he uh, must go. Vladimir Putin says it's less clear and he thinks that both sides are to blame. Now we know that David Cameron has supported the idea of lifting the EU arms embargo, of sending uh, military aid to the Syrian rebels. Uh, the Brit Britain hasn't committed itself to that yet. However, they have definitely been discussing it. They've supported the US uh, taking that step. Now, uh, Vladimir Putin isn't sure about what will happen if arms are sent to Syria and if they fall into the wrong hands. When it comes to selling weapons to Assad's government and who's responsible for the blood, including of children, I don't think you'll deny that both sides are responsible. There's always the question of who's to blame. I don't think you'll deny that we shouldn't support people opening up other people's bodies and eating their entrails on camera. Do you want to support these people? Do you want to arm them? Meanwhile, Iran will deploy 4,000 Revolutionary Guards to Syria to bolster Damascus against a mostly Sunni-led insurgency, media reported. U.S. F-16s and Patriots will stay in Jordan, speculatively to help establish a no-fly zone to aid the Syrian rebels. The deployment of the first several thousand strong military contingent was reported by the Independent on Sunday who quoted Iranian sources tied to the state security apparatus. The sources said the move signals Iran's intention to drastically step up its efforts to preserve the government of President Bashar al-Assad. The Islamic Republic's heightened military commitment could reportedly extend to the opening of a new Syrian front on the Golan Heights against Israel. Golan Heights have recently become a source of new instability with increasing cross-border fire and Austria withdrawing its peacekeepers from the buffer area after a check checking point became the spot for military dispute between the Assad and opposition forces. This stirred concern in the UN with Secretary General Ban Ki-moon warning that fr the fragile state of no war between Tel Aviv and Damascus is at risk. The ongoing military activities in the Golan area of separation continue to have the potential to escalate tensions between Israel and the Sir Syrian Arab Republic and to jeopardize the ceasefire between the two countries, Ban Ki-moon said in a June 13th statement. Journalists have frequently asked Assad whether he plans to open a resistance front at Golan's. The option discussion was brought back to the table 
after every airstrike on the Syrian territory pinned on Israel. Tel Aviv always stopped short of confirming the strikes, but hinted that it would do whatever it takes to stop arms supply to Lebanon's Hezbollah, even if convoys are found going through Syria. According to a Lebanese report on Friday, embattled Syrian President Bashar Assad plans to open a resistance front on the Golan Heights and thinks such a move could unify the various factions in Syria. Assad possesses a detailed plan for the establishment of such a front, reported the Beirut-based Al Akbar Daily, which would in practice be similar to the terrorist group Hezbollah's activities in southern Lebanon. Syrian society's involvement in the resistance against Israel, according to the statements attributed to Assad and allegedly made to re recent visitors at his presidential palace in Damascus, would unite the home front. Reports of Iran's decision to get directly involved in the Syrian conflict come just days after Israel's allies, the U.S., chose to reverse its policy of not providing lethal aid to rebel fighters. The argument the Obama administration used that was Damascus had crossed the red line by deploying chemical weapons against opposition forces on four separate occasions. Washington's policy shift has quickly materialized on multiple fronts, some of them also in the press. On Saturday, the Pentagon announced that a detachment of F-16s and U.S. Patriot anti-aircraft missile systems dispatched to Jordan for the ongoing Eager Lion military exercise will remain in the country once the training drills conclude. The same day, the Washington Post reported that clandestine bases in Jordan and Turkey would serve as conduits for arms being delivered to the rebel fighters. U.S. military support will thus far be limited to light arms and other munitions, although Washington's shifting calculus has potentially given a green light to the regional Sunni allies to provide anti-tank and anti-aircraft weapons to the Assad opposition. According to PressTV.com, a representative of the so-called Free Syrian Army says the terrorist group will ask for tanks, warplanes, and other heavy weapons during an upcoming meeting with U.S. and Western officials in Turkey. We are going to ask them directly and clearly that we need tanks and air jets, all weapons that they can offer us, FSA political coordinator Lu Wei Magdad said during an interview with Reuters on Friday. Just one day before the Pentagon announced its intention to leave Patriot missiles and F-16s in Jordan, senior Washington diplomats in Turkey announced Washington was mauling the establishment of a no-fly zone, possibly near the Jordanian border. Last year, Russian officials stated on multiple occasions that any attack on Syria or Iran would be an attack on Russia. Are these the last days or not? It's unfortunate that there are still far too many people who do not believe that we are living in the last days. According to the Bible, there will be many signs which will indicate the end of the age and the return of Jesus Christ. God has allowed these things to take place so that those who love him will know when the time is near. In addition, God wants to show all peoples of the world that his word is true and to give everyone an opportunity to receive salvation. But if people are blind to the truth, then how will they be saved? The answer is, they will not be. Not unless God, by whatever means he chooses, removes the blinders from their eyes. With that in mind, I'm going to show you some of the signs that have been in the news lately. This is a mass animal die-off map that I started back in January in order to track these events. As you can see, the map contains a lot of markers, and remember, this is just since the beginning of 2013. Don't be fooled, Although some of these events can be considered normal, 
or even man-made, there are many of them that defy explanation. On a personal level, the only time I've seen more than one or two dead fish at the same time was when a small gully which had flooded during the spring of the year, and as the summer progressed, the water began to evaporate, thereby trapping dozens or possibly hundreds of fish which later died. But to have millions of fish die under mysterious circumstances is not normal. It is, however, a sign of the times. In Zephaniah chapter 1, it reads, I will utterly consume all things from the face of the land, says the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the birds of heaven, the fish of the sea, and the stumbling blocks along with the wicked. I will cut man off from the face of the land, says the Lord. If we are in fact living in the last days, then one might expect that the evidence would appear in the daily news headlines, and it does. The following is just a short sample. Friends, we are living in the last days, and the end is getting closer and closer, but there is hope. That hope is in Jesus Christ. Are you saved? If you have a desire to be assured that no matter what happens in the future, you will be saved, then follow the link below and pray the prayer of salvation. May God bless you all.